Hello everyone. Thank you for joining me for this video today. My name is Michaela. I'm a history student at the University of Southern Maine. I made this video to talk about one of my favorite artists, Otto Dix, and how he used his art as a form of protest against World War I, specifically the physical and emotional damage that war causes. He also had many works showcasing the poor, the exploitation of sex workers, and the treatment of veterans after World War I during the Weimar period of Germany. The Weimar period was between World War I and it ended as the Third Reich was rising. William Heinrich Otto Dix was born in Erntermhaus, Germany in December 2nd, 1891. He was the eldest son from a working class family. His mother was a seamstress, his father worked in a foundry. Dix was exposed to art at an early age and was encouraged to be creative. He spent time in the studio of his older cousin, the landscape painter, Fritz Emin. It was there that he was exposed to art. He gained his inspiration to finally become an artist himself. In the early part of the 20th century, he focused mostly on landscapes with his art. It wasn't until after World War I that his painting style um, started to change and the subject matter became much darker. In 1914, at the outbreak of World War I, a then very patriotic Dix joined the military to defend his country. In 1915, he became an NCO to a machine gun unit. At that time, trench warfare was becoming the main strategy and entrenched automatic rifles helped create a stalemate in Europe. He was sent to the Western Front, and during the war, he was injured five times, including a nearly fatal wound to the neck, and he earned an Iron Cross. During his time in the war, he witnessed horrors that he wouldn't have imagined. He kept a journal throughout his time in the war which went on to become 50 sketches in a collection called Simply the War. Because of the atrocities of war, Dix was often plagued by nightmares and intrusive thoughts that correlated with what we now know as post-traumatic stress disorder, which continues to plague soldiers across the globe. The art he created when he returned from the war became some of his most famous works. The horrible atrocities that he witnessed in World War I led him to become part of the New Objectivity Movement, which arose in the 1920s. As its name suggests, it offered a return to unsentimental reality. It focused on the objective world as opposed to the more abstract, romantic, or idealistic tendencies of expressionism. Dix was quoted as saying, you have to see man in an unbridled state in order to know something about him. One of his most famous works, and arguably his most controversial, was called The Trench. It was created in 1923, and it caused quite a stir among citizens once it was shown in public. The museum director, who had first agreed to show the painting, hid it behind a gray curtain, so you had to walk behind it to view it. Although this was partially done to distract people or cover the painting, which can be um, heartbreaking, it was mostly to stir up curiosity amongst the museum attendees. The Trench is a triptych, a painting that is comprised of three separate parts. It's typically in panels and there are hinges so that you can open and close it uh, on the hinges. The trench also included a predella, which is a sort of altar that the painting rests on. It was viewed as anti-war propaganda when it was first shown, and it wasn't um, warmly recepted by many of the public. With the rise of the Nazi party in 1933, Dix was fired from his position as a professor of the Dresden Academy for the Arts, which he had held since soon after he had come back from the Western Front. He was also forbidden to show his work. Over 250 pieces of his art was confiscated from public collections. 
The trench was one of eight of his works included in the shame exposition that was put on by the Nazi party. It was full of forbidden works and pieces that were anti-German and anti-nationalist and had no place in Nazi Germany. The trench was described as painted military sabotage. Instead of this being viewed as a true example of the bloodshed and fear and depravity of the war that Dix experienced firsthand, it was looked at as propaganda. Alfred H. Barr in 1931 called the trench perhaps the most famous picture painted in post-war Europe. The trench depicts the carnage left behind from an attack on a German trench on the Western Front. It's gruesome, it's dark, it's somewhat hard to look at, but it's very real. It really gives you that almost like sick, sad feeling that you should feel when you think of warfare. It's impressive. Each panel of the trench tells its own story. You have the left panel showing soldiers solemnly lining up, battle ready. None of them have a smile on their face. They look almost numb to the fear. You have the middle panel in the center where there are destroyed structures everywhere. The wood and metal is in pieces along with the bodies of soldiers riddled with bullets. There's blood and organs sp spread around the ground. There's a skeleton of a former soldier hanging from a structure pointing towards the mayhem of dead men piled in a heap. What stands out to me the most in this center panel is the soldier wrapped in the blanket sitting down. If you look closely, you'll see the bullet hole in his helmet. Because of the gas mask, we can't see if this soldier was just resting and trying to get mild comfort from the cold of the war or if he was a dead man. In the right panel, you see a ghost-like soldier helping another man step over yet another pile of dead soldiers. They're both wounded and they look in intense anguish. Now the background of the sky, it shows devastation. It's full of smoke and the fire seems to be rising up into the clouds like a hurricane of flames. The Bedella has men in the lower trenches that I assume were dead. They could be sleeping. It can be somewhat hard to tell because the wooden panels lining the wall make it look casket-like. Otto Dix was just trying to share his experience with other Germans. He was trying to bring attention to the marginalized people in society. He wanted to take the thoughts and the anguish that plagued him regularly and share that in hopes of changing people's minds and showing them that warfare should not be our first choice. We shouldn't be prepared to go to war or try to be prepared to prevent war. If you go somewhere with a gun, then you're there to have peace talks. It doesn't make you feel peaceful. He was able to protest the war machine that is so tied into capitalism and how the poor, especially young men, are sent to war. They're used for that purpose. And when they come back, their bodies are beaten up. They have mental disorders that they now have to deal with and the rich don't see that they see tools of war so i really admire otto dix i appreciate his uh, more pacifist um, ideals and i would recommend checking out his full portfolio because he does have some very haunting sketches, haunting paintings, but he also has some really interesting portraits of some of the characters that he 